To celebrate with the one year anniversary of the Bit Squad, we are going to be giving away $1,000 in Bitcoin for the months of March and April, along with two Nano Ledger S's. An extra $100 prize will be available for those who join the Telegram group. Like and comment on every video in March and April for the maximum number of entries. You must be a subscriber to win. Hey, Bit Squad, welcome back to the channel. It's been a few days since I had a news video. I was gone this weekend at Bitcoin Ben's crypto meetup in Blanco, Texas. Had a great time, went to San Antonio, hung with my boy Jay Chains and uh, my boy Crypto Stash. Made a little video, I used it as the intro. If you guys don't know the story behind the video, then it probably won't make any sense. But if you were on Twitter and you know what happened, it was pretty funny. So ha had a good time uh, shooting that and things like that. Also going out of town at the end of this week on vacation. I promised my kids no videos, no podcasts. So while I'm gone uh, Thursday through you know the weekend or whatever, I'll have some uh, an iOS T video and a couple uh, podcasts from Beards and Bitcoin, so you guys will have some content and stuff like that. So let's go ahead and get into the video. There's been huge news over the last few days. I wanted to touch on some of it. Um, you know, obviously starting with the markets, uh, and then we're going to also talk about Tron, IOST, both getting huge pumps over the last few days. We're also going to talk about what is going on with Bitcoin. Why is it rallying? Will it stop? I'm not really sure. We're getting some crazy news coming out of some, you know, di different reports and different articles saying that this doesn't look like it's going to stop I at this point. So we'll get into all that in the video, but let's start with the markets. Market Watch. Okay, so when is it ever that we have a totally red day almost and no one is discouraged? I know I'm not. I'm looking at this market right now and saying, man, 181.5 billion right now in the market cap. Bitcoin dominance still relatively high at 51.1%. So, you know, we have altcoins pumping and I really believe that we're kind of starting to see some of what I've talked about before which is, I don't think we're gonna get a ton of these small, small caps pumping at least at the beginning of this art or uh, this run. I think we're gonna see a lot of the bigger players getting huge pumps, like in the top 100, and that's kind of been bearing out uh, recently. So we got Bitcoin at 52, 55. I think it did get up to 53 today, or pretty close, got pushed back down. But uh, a lot of people are saying, and we'll talk a little bit more about this at the end of the video, that we still have a long ways to go. Um, before we're probably going to see retraces. We might see 57, 5,800 before it retraces. So like I said, pretty much everything is down today except for Tron. Tron has been killing it today, which we're going to talk about in a little bit as well. But it's up over 3 cents right now. Got up to 3.1 cents earlier. Huge, huge, huge news if you're in the Tron community. After a couple months of consolidation, it's been moving forward. Um, and then Nano has also been pumping. It's up 21% right now. So when we look at the biggest winners of the day, we got Nano, Verge, hmm, Wakey Chain, Stratus, and Aurora. Biggest losers of the day, we have a uh, Vest Chain, don't even know what that is. KuCoin, Loop Ring, Dogecoin, and IOSC has dropped about 10% today, but it's coming off of a tear, an absolute tear. If you don't know, I have a note on the network. We're going to talk about IOSC here in a little bit, but, you know, it's been a real long time since, you know, we've I I've been doing these videos and I've been talking you know, at the beginning of the video about the market, and it's been exciting. And not only is it exciting, but we have red everywhere today, and it's still super exciting. And I think that optimism that we're seeing in the market right now, regardless of the red, is something we have not seen since probably last April. So probably a year ago was the last time that we really saw some hope in the market. Once it hit that 10,000 number and it went back down, we got some mini pumps uh, here or, or there, but this is the first time in a long time that I, I feel like there's a lot of optimism in the markets. Number five. Okay, so we have Elon Musk making news again, saying that paper money is going away. And he's really specifically talking about cryptocurrency. He says, cryptocurrency is a far better way to transfer value than pieces of paper. That's for sure, Musk said on the FYI for your innovation podcast. He said technology behind Bitcoin is quite brilliant and it seems like there is some merit to Ethereum and maybe some of the others. He did say that Tesla would not be involved in cryptocurrency specifically uh, because it's a bad use of their resources, but also because, you know, Tesla is all about, you know, electric cars and things like that, trying to be better for the environment. 
Elon Musk does say that, you know, hopefully there's a better way, you know, for cryptocurrency to continue without having to suck all these electricity costs up. So, you know, the thing is, if, if you ask somebody, do you think we'll be using paper money in 100 years? Most people will say no. If I say, do you think we'll be using paper money in 10 years? Most people would say yes. People have a really hard time imagining what the future is going to look like in 10 years. It's hard to imagine in 10 years that our lives will be drastically different. But if you were to even just, you know, like Uber, for instance, Uber wasn't around 10 years ago. That's drastically changed the way that people get around when they travel. There, there's so many other things like Uber that we can point to in the sharing economy and other aspects as well, you know, that show that we will be living in a different world in 10 years because 10 years ago we were living in a drastically different world. So, you know, this will definitely be interesting to, you know, continue to see Elon Musk comments on this, but I definitely agree with him. We will not be having paper money for too much longer. Number four. Okay, coming in at number four, I wanted to bring this up because this was a story last week regarding iost i believe this was released on thursday didn't have a chance to do it in a news video so iost if you haven't been following iost i have a note on the network if you're in the iost community please vote for bitboy crypto as uh the note of choice uh hopefully we'll be getting some nice quarterly quarterly rewards here pretty soon but we can talk about that in a different video um, my point here with iost is there was this you know this rumor of this secret weapon that CEO Jimmy Zong had, 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 you know, kind of alluded to. And Thursday we got the news on what it is. And IOST started pumping. It has been absolutely killing it. It did have a pullback today. It's down 10%. But when I started my note on this network, it was at 0 0.07 cents. So almost a penny or point. 0.7 of a penny basically so a little under a penny now you know it got all the way up to 1.8 cents it was almost at two pennies just the other day it's pulled back to around 1.5 but i do expect it after this pullback to move back up so not financial advice but i do feel like there's a lot of financial upside for me personally with iost and you can take that for what it's worth now what is this secret weapon well it's called the oasis and I thought it was kind of weird the way in the article it talks about here. Um, you know, it does relate it to the, uh, the Oasis and Ready Player One. It says, remember the exciting movie, Ready Player One and its virtual world Oasis? And it kind of makes this, you know, comparison between the Oasis and the movie in real life. And what they're saying with this is the Oasis in, returns to, in, in, in regards to IOST is not at this point at least leading us to a metaverse. Basically what it's saying is the Oasis is going to be an, un, an invisible kind of underlying element of IOST that is going to spur on adoption in blockchain. Now, it's going to do this through five different ways. Exemption of account registration and keeping a private key. Eliminate resource consumption. Fair, transparent, and non-temperable transactions. Verifiable game fairness. Easy and smooth DAP transfer. So, Basically, what it's doing is it is taking some of the barriers to entry in cryptocurrency, the complicated way that we have to store our private keys by writing it down in a notebook or using a steel plate. You know, there's a lot of very difficult things about, you know, crypto. When we're in it, we understand it. But for people that are outside of the space, they don't get it. They don't have a clue. And if you remember when you were new to cryptocurrency, it was all a learning curve for you as well. That may be even why you watch videos on YouTube, because at some point you are looking around for ways to do things because it's complicated and you stumbled across some YouTubers that you like. That's me. Um, so, you know, I, I think one of the really strong arguments for cryptocurrency adoption in the past, or, or one of the ways that people have, have said, including myself, that we see it happening, when you're able to use blockchain on a daily basis without even realizing you're using blockchain, that's when we'll know that we're close to adoption. And that is really what they're trying to do here with Oasis. So hats off to IOST for this. I'm going to be hopefully getting some big updates on this soon to see, I guess, a little more you know, mechanically how this is going to work, um, or technically, you know, technologically how this is going to work. And I'll relay, uh, relay that to you guys as soon as I get it. Number three. All right. From one pumper to another, Tron has been pumping hard today, over three cents. 
Um, you know, it, we haven't seen this since January, a, a kind of run like this for Tron. And that was leading up to Nitron, which if you don't know, a lot of crypto projects, when they have their own individual conference, they usually get a pump. So that was expected. This one was not really. And so it was good after seeing Tron not pump for the last several days while, you know, the price of Bitcoin and the whole markets were rising. It was nice to see Tron finally get a pump. Now, I found this article very interesting. Are prospects of Tron Ethereum merger and sidechain supporting Tron bold? So, you know, it, what this is saying is that Justin Sun and Vitalik Buterin, it doesn't seem like on the surface that they like each other. And why would they? They're competitors. Now, Justin Sun is always poking fun at Vitalik, and he's also doing the same with Justin Sun. But is there a chance that this year we will see Tron and Ethereum collaborate on some type of project that would, in a way, give more credibility in my mind, um, you know, to these platforms that we have some of them that are working together on projects. Now, this would not be an actual merger, right? Ethereum and Tron are not going to become the same company, but through interoperability, if they're able to work together easier and work together on a DAP maybe or something like that, they do use the same uh, you know, programming language, Solidity, that would be very interesting news. Now, why is Tron pumping if if this is not the reason? Because in my opinion, I don't think this is the reason. I don't think people today were like, Tron and Ethereum might work on a project in the future? Man, we need to get on it. I think it probably has more to do with Tron's USDT promotion with their Tether that is going to be on their blockchain. You guys know I'm not a fan of Tether, but you know, there's a way if you have Tron, if you go, I believe it's Huobi and maybe OKX, not 100% sure on those, and you exchange your uh, your either Ethereum-based or Omni-based Tether for Tron's version of Tether, you will be able to earn interest on it for I think the next 120 days, something like that. Don't have the details right here in front of me. That probably is what it is, people buying up Tron to get in that. I do expect Tron to have a pullback. It may go up a little higher tomorrow and the next day, but I do ultimately think it will have a pullback, but man, it sure is good to see that thing pop. Number two. Okay, so there's a story going around that Miss Universe has received the lightning torch. As you can see the title right there. It's a little misleading, not super misleading, but it is a little misleading. She did not win Miss Universe. As you can see here, it says, Bitcoin adoption took a step in a new direction this weekend after a former Miss Universe contestant join the lightning torch transaction relay so she was passed the lightning network torch the lightning torch by the ceo or founder that is of local bitcoins so i don't know who she's passing it to next but it is very interesting um she is from sweet uh finland rosa maria ritty and she had this tweet here she's supposedly giving away um, you know, 10,000 sats to the first 21 of her followers that invoiced her. I'm sure that's already happened. But, you know, it, it is cool when we have someone from the outside that isn't shilling something coming into the space, but is talking about and taking part in something that is, you know, in my opinion, leading to adoption or leading to better usage. So, you know, Lightning Network is is trying to, to build a faster network for Bitcoin, or it actually, it already is a faster network for people that use it. But, uh, you know, we have someone coming out that's just doing something positive for the space and isn't shilling. There's nothing she's gaining out of this other than, you know, fame and adoration of crypto Twitter, which isn't that great. Um, you know, it, it's definitely refreshing to see. So hats off to her. I'm glad she's taking part in this. I'm sure she probably owns some cryptocurrency or she wouldn't be taking part of this. So it's really cool to kind of see the spider web of crypto and Bitcoin spreading. The number one crypto story of the day. Okay, so obviously our top story over the last few days has been Bitcoin. It's been on a tear. It's had several times where you felt like it was going to pull back and it just kept going or it just slightly retraced and moved forward. But be careful because a lot of analysts believe that we're going to see one more really big pump, maybe run us almost to 6,000 and then we're going to see a significant retracing. Now, what is this retracing? What are people saying this retracing is going to be? 47.50. That's a number that people are talking about. You can see right there. 47.50. 
Um, we're also seeing some um, numbers 50-52, as you can see right there, pushing it back down towards 4,500. So we're seeing people basically say anywhere between 42 and 52, or uh, 42 and 50-52, which we can all live with that, right? If, if the price goes down, back down to, you know, even 42, and that becomes the new uh, support line, then I think we'd all agree, like, we're in a much better spot than we were three months ago, or even two months ago, or even a month ago, where 42 was the number that Bitcoin could just not get over. So why are we having this rally? And I, I like the picture here of the iceberg. If you don't know the little iceberg analogy, it really goes to anything. You know, you only 10% of the iceberg can be seen. So when we're looking at why Bitcoin moves, we can look at kind of some cosmetic things, uh, you know, on the surface that seem to make it move. However, there's a lot of stuff going on under the surface that we can't see that's pushing it forward. That's why I made the video last week where I kind of made fun of people saying, this is why it's moving, this is why it's moving. But let's look at a few reasons why you know, some of the underlying reasons why we may have been getting this move. Market cycles. So it says here, this is very interesting, I thought. So we are now entering the 16 month of the bear market. So if we look here, it says the bear market of 2014, 2015 lasted 19 months from peak to valley, losing 80% of the highest price. We are currently in a cycle that has declined approximately 83% from its pinnacle and three months away from the longest bear market in Bitcoin short history. Now, I believe the bear market's over. I believe the bear market technically was over when we got that last candle in, in December, on December 15, to push the price down to about 3,100. So, you know, for me, it's kind of hard to actually say that the bear market isn't over because I believe it is. I think we're in an accumulation stage, but I thought this was also interesting. It said last August, uh, crypto briefing wrote that Bitcoin was unlikely to recover in 2018 and hypothesized the bear cycle was about halfway through. That was in the ninth month of the cycle and eight months later, we may be approaching better times. And I do believe this. I do believe that if we do have a, a another huge drop, like we go from 53 back down to sub four numbers, it's hard for me to believe that we're going to break much lower than 4,000 because now people have seen what Bitcoin can do again. They've been reminded of its power. They've been reminded by what this market is capable of. And when we see huge price drops, we're going to see people rushing to get in. And, you know, I, I, I've always said, I don't think Bitcoin will ever get back to $3,000 or less. Why? Because I know too many people who have buy orders set at 3,000. 3,000 was the number that people were saying last year that seemed impossible, even when we were at seven, eight, nine thousand, and then we almost got there. We got down to 3,100, and we didn't get there. And all of those people that had those $3,000 and less buy orders were are going to be left holding the bag. They're not going to get those orders, in my opinion. We'll never see those numbers again. And there were so many people counting on that specific number and it just never got there. So very interesting. Um, two other things here. Uh, Bitcoin transactions are on the rise. So, you know, usage is moving up. If you look here, basically from the end of the bull run, even though the numbers have not been great, Bitcoin uh, usage has been going up. Um, and th to me, this is the most important thing. And I'm going to tie this together with another article that I read that I don't have up right now. Uh, retail interest in Bitcoin can be measured through Google and Wikipedia searches. And the last 30 uh, have seen an increasing number of queries that can be labeled as retail. Here's a list of some of the rising queries related to Bitcoin in the last three months. This is huge, guys. Will Bitcoin recover? Bitcoin ATM near me. Coinbase app. And I do believe the Coinbase app moving up that much, 4,300% does have something to do with some of the new coins that they've listed, specifically Stellar, XRP, basic attention token, things like that. Best cryptocurrency to invest in, 2,900% and cryptocurrency on Robinhood up 300%. So these numbers to me are absolutely crazy. Now, an even crazier story that I read today, 
Baidu, who's basically the Google of China, the number one search query right now. Number one is Bitcoin. How powerful is that? The interest is back. I've been telling people for weeks, the new interest, the normies, if you will, the no coiners, the, the people that pulled out, sold the bottom or yeah, sold the bottom, bought the top, whatever. Those people are now coming back. I've seen it myself. I've seen three people that I know who were not into crypto or Bitcoin over the last week ask me how to buy it. I know people who have been sitting on the sidelines because they were losing faith. They are now back. They bought back in last week. So absolutely huge. I've seen it with my own eyes. We're seeing it with the interest numbers. We're seeing it with the searches. Bitcoin is back, baby. <laughs> We're back. We are back. I'm so excited. I would go so far as to say that I am starting to believe, I'm not 100% sure yet, I'm starting to believe that this run is starting now. Right now, we are starting this bull run. I can't say how fast it's going to go. I don't know. It may be slow and gradual over a year and a half. It may all of a sudden go parabolic by the end of the year, but it is starting, in my opinion. The number one reason is because the interest is back. That is everything in this space. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, like I said, I'll be out of town later this week, but I've got news video for you guys today, uh, tomorrow, and on Wednesday before taking a break. I'm actually going to take a break from crypto. So um, <laughs> just for a couple days while I'm on vacation. But uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. Don't forget to you know make comments, like this video for our contest and things like that. And uh, we'll talk to you later. Bitboy out.